Hello there! Aren't you tired of all those expensive full body tracking solutions and base stations? Looking for something more affordable for casual social gaming and a little extra immersion? Well, my name is Richard Vergoski and today I'm going to tell you all about the Pico Motion Tracker, a new contender in the VR full body tracking market. Wanna know more? Stick around and enjoy the video. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Before we dive in, a little backstory. Almost a year ago, I released my first video about Pico Motion Tracker Development Kit. It was the first official product of its kind, using both IMU and IR tracking for full body tracking. Initially available only in China for developers and enthusiasts, Pico later launched a beta testing program, which I also announced on my channel. The new Pico Motion Tracker is essentially an evolution of that development kit, but now it is available globally. It features improved tracking, a built-in battery, and a redesigned strap. All without a significant price increase. Pico Motion Tracker stands out because it combines IMU tracking with inside-out IR tracking to compensate for the drift, a common problem with other IMU-based solutions like Slime VR and Haritorax. Here is the difference. IMU Solutions estimates the position based on motion, but over time these estimates can become inaccurate. This is where lighthouse tracking like HTC Vive and Tundra trackers always win, because it actually tracks the precise position of the tracker in space. Pico fixes this IMU inaccuracy issue by adding IR diodes, allowing the headset's cameras to correct the tracker's position every now and then. Sounds simple, right? But is it really enough? I will get into that later in the video. A lot of you have asked, how many trackers can you use at once? Right now, you can use two or three trackers, two for your ankles and optional one for your waist. Third tracker isn't perfect yet, and Pico is still working on it, which is exactly why they sell them in sets of two. Rumor has it, there might be a future set of three trackers, with a different strap for the waist, but for now, the waist tracker isn't essential, as you will see in the video. For those who spend hours or even sleep in VRChat, good news. According to specification, Pico Motion Tracker lasts over 25 hours on a single charge. I've spent over 10 hours testing them and I still haven't had to recharge them, which is impressive because they are really lightweight too, which makes them super comfy for long sessions. Speaking of VRChat sleepers, check this out. I'm sitting with a blanket over my legs and the trackers. The headset cannot see the trackers, yet I can still move my legs. Now I'm standing with the blanket in the front of me. Everything still works. So yes, you can sleep with them and cover them with anything you want, unless you are using some kind of cosmic material that disturbs electromagnetic field, but I really doubt that. Now, a common question. Are Pico Motion trackers compatible with MetaQuest or any other headsets? Unfortunately, no, and they will never officially be. They can work only with Pico 4, Pico 4 Pro, Pico 4 Ultra, and Pico Neo 3. While it is possible someone might hack them in the future to work as a Slime VR, you would lose the IR tracking advantage, which makes it pointless. Alright, let's get these trackers set up. Launch your Pico headset and ensure you're running the latest version of Pico OS. Open the Motion Tracker app from your library. It should be already installed. Read and accept the policy and safety information. Allow the necessary permission and click pair. Follow the on-screen instructions and you're ready to go. Once paired, always check for firmware updates. Pico developers are quite active and the regular updates are expected to improve performance. Keeping your trackers updated is crucial, especially in early release period. Next, calibration. Each time you put your trackers on, you will need to calibrate them. Just just press calibrate in the app and follow the simple instructions. It only takes few seconds and you're all set. When using free trackers, make sure to select the correct position of your waist tracker. You can do it in the app settings. I recommend placing it in the front of you to take the full advantage of IR tracking. Keep in mind that Pico trackers only work with Pico Connect. They won't work with virtual desktop or any other streaming app. But don't worry, Pico has made huge improvements to their streaming software over the last year and it performs really really well. After launching Pico Connect and SteamVR, you will see new tab in your SteamVR tool Bar. From there, you can adjust controllers and tracker settings. Pico lets you disable specific tracking points like elbows, knees, and chest, which most of them are just estimated. I tested it with just ankles and waist tracker, so only physical one. That way it worked best for me, but feel free to experiment and see what works best for you. You can also see all the trackers in Steam VR panel. They all have different colors. Green means that it is a physical tracker, blue means that it is estimated tracker, and gray means that it is disabled tracker. Pretty simple, right? Now let's put these trackers to the test in VR chat. First up, let's move around. On the left, you can see me using just two trackers on my ankles, and on the right side, I've added the third tracker for my waist. In both situations, the movement looks pretty good. Now let's try something different. Look at the rotation movement and now a little shaking. There is almost no movement within the range of hips on the left side because the software is estimating the movement with almost no data. That is why it looks way better with the third tracker. Time for more complex poses. Sitting. Okay. Lying on the floor. Okay, on the bed, mm -hmm. and here two extra poses, bridge and handstand, with a wall support because I'm a little bit weak, okay? 
all looks pretty good to me. And not gonna lie, it is kinda impressive, especially if you compare it to where the development kit was a year ago. Even though two trackers works well for simple movement like standing, walking around and sitting, adding an additional tracker for your waist makes your movement look more natural. Let's talk about how Pico Motion Tracker stacks up against other popular IMU based tracking like Slime VR and Harry Thorax. All of them rely on IMU sensors to track your body's movement in VR, but Pico has a unique advantage. It combines IMU tracking with IR diode. Here is how it works. Slime VR and Harry Thorax rely entirely on IMUs to estimate the position of the tracker. Problem with IMU data is that it accumulates small errors over time, which cause drift. Even with the best algorithms, these errors leads to misalignments and eventually you will need to recalibrate your trackers to correct it. Pico Motion trackers solve this issue by adding IR diodes. These diodes allow the tracker to recalibrate its position every now and then using the cameras on your Pico headset, effectively correcting drift and ensuring more accurate long-term tracking. This makes Pico more reliable in the wrong run. Another advantage is that Pico operates in a single environment. You don't need to mix and match different tracking solutions. Everything works together seamlessly, and it is essentially plug and play, making it way easier to set up compared to connecting and troubleshooting multiple systems at the same time. However, while Pico's IR correction gives it a clear advantage, it uses fewer trackers compared to other IMU full body tracking solutions. This means those track more parts of your body like knees, chest and elbows leading to better coverage overall. At the end of the day, when it comes to IMU full body tracking, it is all about the software. The hardware has been around for over a decade, but it is only as good as the algorithms running behind it. Pico will need to continuously improve their tracking software, especially since all the heavy processing happens inside the headset, which has limited resources. Their models and algorithms need to be simple and lightweight, but complex enough for us to enjoy it. Now let's compare HTC trackers and Pico Motion trackers. On the left I'm using Pico Motion trackers, ankles and waist. On the right I've got three HTC Vive trackers in the same setup. Let's start by walking and moving around. You will immediately notice how accurate the Vive trackers are in comparison. The movements are slightly more precise and consistent. However, considering the price difference, Pico still performs really really well. Next let's try a little rotation and shaking. And now let's see how they perform while lying down or sitting. While the HTC Vive trackers clearly have the edge in terms of precision, the Pico Motion tracker still holds their own for casual use, especially when you factor in how much affordable they are. Now a quick experiment. Can you mix Pico trackers with Vive trackers? Yes, it actually works. You can use Pico for your waist and Vive for your legs, or the other way around. All you need to do is disable specific trackers in Pico Connect Steam VR settings. While I don't recommend this setup, it is cool to see that it is actually possible. So Richard, after everything we've covered, the big question is, are Pico motion trackers worth buying? In my opinion, the answer is yes, but with some important considerations. First, let's talk about what Pico motion trackers brings to the table. For a relatively low cost, they offer full body tracking without a need for expensive base stations. For anyone looking to increase their immersion in VR chat or other social VR platforms without breaking the bank, this is a fantastic option. The Pico Motion trackers are small, lightweight, and surprisingly accurate thanks to the combination of IMU tracking and IR correction. But, and this is a big but, this isn't a perfect solution for everyone. If you are into complex activities like VR dancing, where precise movements and complex poses are essential, these trackers might not fully meet your expectation. While they work great for casual gaming and social VR, the current limitation I have already mentioned in this video means that they cannot stand against lighthouse tracking solutions in terms of accuracy and overall performance. Once again, one of the most important things to keep in mind that it is all about the software. The hardware behind these trackers is solid, but the real potential lies in how well the software can handle the tracking data, correct the drift and estimate body position. Pico's development team has done a great job so far, but it is going to take some consistent updates to keep improving. If they continue to refine the tracking algorithm and add features based on community feedback, Pico Motion trackers could get even better over time. Remember, this is the first mainstream product of this type, and for that price, starting at 79 euros, it is a great deal. Paired with Pico 4 headset, you can get full body tracking and excellent visuals for a fraction of what high-end VR setup costs. If you're looking for an affordable way to get into full body VR, this is the right option. So is it perfect? No, but considering its price, ease of use, and potential for future updates, I think Pico Motion trackers are definitely worth trying, especially if you're more focused on social VR rather than ultra precise ass shaking. And for your information, no, this video isn't sponsored, and it will never be. I love VR industry. Full body tracking still isn't as popular as we would like it to be, which is why seeing new tech always makes me so happy, especially when it's backed by a company like Pico, who have resources to really push this part of VR industry to the next level. The question is, will they actually do it?
That's it for now. Thank you for sticking around. If you have any other questions about Pico Motion trackers or anything VR related, feel free to join our little Discord server. You can find a link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. See you soon in the future videos. Bye.